Smart eBehaviors give you a nice capability to build intelligence into your models. For example, we have a tanks catalog that we've done a, another video on, but basically this is all built with an intelligent information using the smart e-behaviors. For example, on our tank shell, you can know that we have parameters driving the overall size of this. For example, we have a 96, 126. Let's just go ahead and pick 48 for now, and we can zoom out and see that we have an overall size of 48 for our tank shell. If you also go and turn on your attachment points, you'll see that we have intelligence built onto this attachment point in the name that's actually driving and setting variable information. For example, it's looking for anything that has an ID variable and it's going to set it to the OD of this particular part. Okay. So for example, if we drop a tank ring, notice that when we hit OK to this, it automatically sized and set the parameter information for this part. What I mean by that is this guy actually has a parameter that has a value called ID. It actually took the value and it set its expression to the OD. It didn't just take the value, but it actually built an expression for it. What that means is if we change our tank's OD value, the ID value will automatically be updated and give us appropriate change. So a very powerful capability over the previous capabilities where it just set the value. Let's give it a simple example of how to do this on your own parts. Let's just go ahead and start with a very simple shape of a cylinder. And okay, we'll zoom up here to see our shape. First thing we need to, to do is have a parameter at our top level shape. So let's go ahead and create a parameter. And we're just going to call this just called size. And it's going to be a user defined and a length parameter. And we don't need to set the value at this point. What we want to do in this case, since this is going to be our main shape, we want to get the overall length or width value of this, this shape. And that's just coming from the handle. So these are our length and our width handles. So the cylinder is going to drive both of them equally. But how we get that information into our parameters is if we go to our IntelliShape properties, we will see our shape name, which is our system name, which is shape1. If we go to our parameter, we can actually drive down to that value by typing in shape1, size box. And we want to access that length value. And you can see that it actually pulls that value dynamically for us. So if we go ahead and change this over to 3, for example, we'll see that this is now updated to 3. So that gives us our starting point. And of course, we're going to need to add an attachment point to our object. So let's go to our tools, select our part, add an attachment point. And we're just going to go ahead and add it out to our center top face here. And we can go ahead and just set a name for now. Just call this test. And we'll just create a neutral connection point for now. Next, we need to have our follower that's going to drop onto this object. So we'll just drop another cylinder out here. In this case, we actually want this one to be driven. So we want to drive this guy not to be able to pull these handles. So in order to do that, we'll create an, a parameter at the IntelliShape level for this guy. And we'll call it uh, overall size for this parameter. We want to set it to a value of 1. Uh, let's set it for 2 for right now. And again, this is a length parameter. In order to drive, I'm sorry, set that for 2. In order for this to drive, this value, we can actually go into our IntelliShape properties. And if we go to our size box, we can go show formulas and type in overall size. And we can copy that into both of these. It doesn't really matter. It's going to be the same value for both of those. And hit OK. So now, if we actually change this value, for example, let's change it to 1, we can see that when we apply, we're actually driving that information. Now, in order to use these connection points, they have to be at the same level. So we're going to have to add a parameter at the part level as well. We'll just call it the follower. And we'll just set it to 1 for now. And again, this is going to be a, a user-defined value of 1 inside of here. We hit apply. And if we open up our parameter table, let's go ahead and set our follower as the driver for our overall size. Okay. So now if we look at a part level, we have one value here. In this case, we need to add an attachment point again. In this one, we'll go ahead and add an attachment point here on our bottom. And we'll set its name again to test under what's called a neutral and hit OK. So now if we go and create a new catalog, 
put our element into our catalog and drop it out, of course it will modify and size, or sorry, orient and position itself on drop. It didn't do any sizing yet. So if we go to our attachment point and set some information onto it, so here's where you can actually drive this. So we're going to say we want to drive the follower. That's our variable that we're looking for, and we want to set it equal to the size that's on our part. Okay, maybe we want to subtract some distance so we know uh, it's a different value. So let's say minus 0.25 inch, and we'll just go ahead and just add this as a currently without the expression. So if we hit OK, what this will do is now if we drop our part out. It should adjust and subtract the size for us, as what we expect. But if we now adjust this guy, notice nothing happens, because it just grabbed the value on drop. If we wanted to do the expression, all you simply do is go back into your your uh, smart attachment point name and actually say, we want to do this as an expression, and say modify, and you'll see that this gets updated. Now, when we drop in our part out, it will automatically adjust the size, and when we change our model, it will automatically update with the parameter since it's setting it as a value. So a very easy way to create your own intelligent, smart e-behaviors using expressions.